Hey, y'all, look what I found here. Look what I found here. I'm up here cleaning out this old room up in the attic up here. I found some old, one of my old DNA papers. This is what I've gotten when I had taken the DNA test. The second page here is the most important page. And it talks about. It talks about the personal profile and top personal matches for Yasha Ben Israel. This is my personal DNA profile. This here is tell you about my profile. Okay. And this the population matches, number of population, and the rank. The regional affiliation. Okay. This is the regional affiliation reference map. Then down here you got the people here. The people in whom my matches are. See where it say African immigrants 10. These are the 10 matches that I have here. I want to read to y'all something here. Read to y'all something about this. But let me turn the page here. You got a... Uh, you know the DNA basics letting you know how this stuff really goes down and... Letting you know how historical migrations work, you know, and how they do their testing. The back of this is really not important, you know, it's really not important. But the front is getting back to this page. This is where all the information is, okay? Now, I want y'all to go with me here. We're going to read something from here. The Ganiya Basu, there was a Portuguese Jewish presence in the Ganiya Basu from the 16th century. Portuguese King Manuel I reference, made reference to a group of Lesedos or Lancandos. Most of these were Portuguese Jews who had been deport, deported. The term Lancedos or Lancedos derived from the Portuguese verb to throw out. It related to their outcasts or fugitive role in Luso African coastal. The Mozabites, we see here. Mozabite. Mozabite, Berber, Ganiya Basu. I just talked about the Jews of the Ganiya Basu. The Mozabite people are a Berber ethnic group inhabiting the Mazab natural region in northern Sahara in Algeria. They speak Mozabite, Tam Tamzabit. Mozabite terms of it. Where was we at here? Oh, okay. I moved that up. I'm trying to move that. Mozabite terms of it. Oh, hey, of the Zanati languages in the Berber branch of the Afro Asiatic family. Many also. Speak Maghrabi Arabic as a second language. Mozabites are primarily Ibadi Muslims, 
But there's a small population of Jews as well, and they're all black folks. Ancient Hebrew Berbers of Africa, Berber indigenous North African tribes who originally spoke dialects of Berber language, medieval Arabic writers ascribe the ancestry of the Berbers to Goliath the Philistine and maintain their Canaanite origin. The Phoenician uh, colonization of Africa. The long Carthaginian domination and the survival of Punic, a language closely related to Hebrew, supported these legends which spread amongst the Berbers themselves. Similar tales are found in the writings of Greek and Latin authors and in the Talmud which spread the legend that the Canaanite immigrants of their own free will to North Africa. It is said that survivors of the Jewish revolt in Cyrencia, 115-116 Common Era, found refuge amongst the Berbers of Western Libya. Scholars have frequently claimed that the Jews desire to proselytize found a favorable atmosphere amongst the Berbers from the 1st to the 7th centuries around the time Islam came, which put a stop to it. African Christianity, whose early converts were 1st to the 7th centuries, African, oh, excuse me, I, I read that twice, African Christianities whose early converts were Jews clashed with Christian proselytism. Archaeological discoveries, epigraphs, and writings of the Christian scholar Tertullian and St. Augustine, indignant at the growing Berber conversions to Judaism, attest to these facts that Persecution by the Byzantine forced Jews to settle amongst the Berbers in the mountains and desert regions. Ibn Khaldun conformed the existence of a large number of proselyte Berbers at the time of the Arab conquest of Africa. The Islamization of these countries, however, did not abolish all Previous beliefs, Christianity was abandoned rapidly, Judaism continued to exist, and from Tripolitania to Morocco, modern ethnographers and anthropologists encountered small groups whom they called Jewish Berbers. They isolated, uh, they isolated groups of Jews these isolated groups of Jews lived in the high mountains of North Africa until the last few decades. Some scholars desig designated them as the descendants of Berber proselytes. In most cases, they eventually intermingled with the rest of the population. However, a survival of such groups to the present is now Doubt it. Hmm. Say the, the, the Jewish survivors, they doubt to exist, huh? It is difficult to evaluate Jewish life in Berber society because Berbers did not have a written history. Berber history was completely oral. Thus, information on Jewish life come from travelers who visit the Atlas, who visited the Atlas Mountains, from a few written sources and from interviews with people who lived in these areas. Two main sources are Hijit Mordecai, written by Mordecai HaKohen, a Jewish scholar from Tripoli, who wrote about the Jews in Jebel Nefusa, south of Tripoli, and a statistical study carried out between 1961 and 1964 by the Mossad, the Israeli Secret Service during the Yachin operation, 
in which the Mossad organized the aliyah of the Jews in that area. Jews coexisted within Berber societies. They had complete autonomy, communal organizations, and possibility of practicing their religions. Jews were mainly occupied in trade and craft and did not work in agriculture. There were some structure of each group enabling each each to earn livelihood. They also shared religious rituals and customs. For example, at Shavuot, at Shavuot, the Berber, for example, at Shavuot, the Berbers at Libya poured water on Jews as one of their customs. Yeah, excuse me there, I had a phone call, I had to erase that off of there. The Mossad study referred to Jewish life in Berber society at the end of this existence. In the village of Garama in southern Morocco, for example, there were 285 Jews. 73% of them below the age of 30, about 20% of their families had eight members. 50% fewer that uh, 50% fewer that seven persons. Seven Jews were tailored, seven farmers, five merchants, two butchers, although more research is needed. It seems that these figures characterize Jewish life in the Berber villages. Moroccan Jews romanticize El Yahud, El Maghribi, Hebrew, Yahudi, Marakoim. Marokoim. That's from Morocco. That's what that's supposed to be. Marokoim. The, that's Jewish Moroccans. Marokoim. That's how they say Moroccans. Yahudim Moroccan. Jewish Moroccans. Are Jews who lived, or are Jews who live or have lived in Morocco? A significant Jewish, significant Jewish population migrated from Spain and Portugal. Sephardic Jews after the Spanish Inquisition to the areas that settled amongst Arab Berbers. They were later met by a second wave of immig- uh, second waves of mi- second wave of migration from the Iberian Peninsula. In the period immediately preceding the following, preceding and following the 1492 Alhambra decree, when Jews were expelled from Spain and soon after from Portugal, the second immigration was changed. Moroccan Jewry, who largely embraced the El Andalus, El Andul, and Andalusian. Sephardic clergy to switch to a mostly Sephardic identity. North African Sephardim are a distinct subgroup of Sephardi Jews who descend from exiled Iberian, which is Spanish, from Spain, Jewish families of the late 15th century and the North African Maghribi Jewish community, Sephardim, Black African Spanish Jews, the, Sp- the descendants of Spain who left Spain, Portugal after 1492 explosion, referred to as Sephardim. The word Sephardim comes from the Hebrew word for Spain, Sephardim. That is stated in the Bible. It is believed that Jews have lived in Spain since the era of King Solomon. 965 
BCE to 930 BCE. Little information can be found on this. Jews until the beginning of the first century. We do not know that in 305 CE, the Council of Toledo passed a edict forbidding Jews from blessing the crops of non-Jews and prohibited prohibiting Jews and non-Jews from eating together. I'm a straight up Israelite, y'all. Yes, 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 yes. Look what I have here. Cape Verdean, Connecticut, African American, Alabama, African American, Ganaya Basu, African Spanish, Virginia, African American, Northern and Central Moroccan Berbers, the Ghanaia Basu, Berbers Morocco, and Algeria Mozabites. Y'all, we are the children of Israel. Don't let these people fool y'all. You got, and they got, you know, you got, then you got the haters. The most, the most hatingest people are other blacks. There's white people that has accepted this, the white Jews that have accepted this, white Christians that accepted this. The only people out here that are not accepting this are heathenized black people. People who wants to go against the writings of people like Ibn, Aldun, uh, uh, Ibn Khaldun and Marco Polo and uh, Leo, Can, uh, uh, Leo Africanus and, and Ibn, uh, Ibn Aldrisi. Al Al uh, I mean, you just got countless and countless and countless of records that I could dig through about the history of the Jews of North Africa. Anybody who got a problem with that is really, really, really sick and have a real, real problem with self-hatred. You know what I'm saying? The DNA evidence tell you. This is my DNA evidence. All of, all of these societies, if you look them up, have had an early strong history in Judaism. That being stated, I'm out of here. I mean, I'm tired of the naysayers, you know what I'm saying, with all of the foolery and the fuckery. They don't know what they're talking about. My DNA records straight up declare that we are the descendants of the children of Israel. Only a fool who does not know African history uh, uh, would refute this. And, and, and like I said, the, 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 the writers who wrote this back in the 14 and 1500s were literate people. Any of their African or Pan-African people was not literate, so they could not have passed no stories down to them. Our stories is passed down. They're liars. We're out of here, y'all. YouTube, here we come.